Hello everybody, my name is Max McAllister and I'm going to show you some of the fine points of rebuilding a Bobcat uh, exchange um, for um, a Bobcat, mine happens to be an E50 excavator, it's a 2018. There's an older style and a newer style. <coughs> um, this one is the older style and uh, although I don't know about the newer style, I've seen some pieces that appear to be um, where where the uh, pistons push out here to pick up your bucket. They're threaded versus these which are held in with clips. But I'm not going to do a video here showing you all this because I'm assuming if you're brave enough to try and rebuild your own exchange, you, you're probably pretty handy to begin with. I'm going to show you the things you can't find anywhere else on the internet about, about how to do it and what you're going to have to do. <coughs> um, so, uh, First thing, removing the piece. If you need help just getting this thing off, you're in, already in big trouble, don't do it. Just give up. So hopefully you can get this chunk off and get it on your workbench. Um, the uh, uh, What you're really going to be having trouble with most of the time are these two pistons that actually hold your bucket on. They retract. Once they're messed up and damaged, the seals leak, and you retract them, and oil starts shooting out the side. So you're probably already to that stage, and that's why you're here. So... If you get the kits, the parts from Bobcat, um, <clears throat> some of the parts in the assembly, in the exploded view, um, you can tell how they're oriented. And, and so that's the problem. And I'm, I'll show you that here. Um, even when you take it apart, sometimes they're so badly damaged that you can't tell how to put it back. Um, so uh, I have seen where people suggest that you can do this on the machine. That's nothing I would ever attempt because I, I just... There's, uh, uh, these are little tiny hydraulic passages that pass through this uh, swivel that's on here. And, uh, you know, any dirt and debris that gets down in here can block those passages. So this is something that should be fully disassembled, cleaned in a workshop environment before you start assembling anything. Um, but there are people who suggest that you can do this on the machine by retracting it in the field, pulling the clips out, and then letting it go and popping the pieces out shooting them out into the dirt. I, I think that's kind of absurd. Uh, what I did, <coughs> um, I used uh, uh, a hydraulic press. So I laid this um, uh, mechanism on the device of a hydraulic press. I took a socket and um, that fit over the uh, piston. Because what we have to push on right here is this seal head. You can come in. This is what's down in here. So we're not worried about the piston. Your socket may push the piston down in. Inside of here is a spring pushing the two pistons out. So we got to push on that spring. If you haven't done it yet, beware. Um, oil is going to shoot out of your hoses. So have something, a rag or a towel over them. The first time you push it, it's going to displace any oil that's left in there. But you have to push down far enough. It'll actually bottom out. So you can push this thing down quite a ways. And what we're trying to get to is there's a circlip in here. And it is challenging to get that out. You'll need um, a couple of good picks, maybe a flat blade screwdriver. It's difficult to get it started. Once you do, you can wedge a screwdriver under it and then keep prying with the pick and wedging the screwdriver further until eventually it'll come out. Um, then uh, <coughs> to get, it may be possible that it won't just pop out because what's really there is just the pressure of this spring. So uh, it may not actually just pop out. Me, I retracted the press slowly because I was not certain as to what was going to happen. And what I did, um, I was replacing these uh, pistons because they're already, they were my, one of the, I'll get to that, but you'll want to replace these. So anyway, I took a pair of channel locks and just wiggled it. And uh, so the, then the spring pressure would push up on it and I'd raise the press a little bit just because I wasn't sure of what was going to happen. So <clears throat> turns out no incredible danger. You know, once you get this bearing to start coming out, um, uh, the spring pressure is mostly off. So it's not, um, you know, super dangerous or life-threatening kind of situation. Um, now, <clears throat> I did have to use quite a bit of force to get that, uh, to get the seals to the external seal here to pop up it's got to pass through that circlip groove. So um, you got to be able to pry it. So being able to rock it and walk it and twist it, all that kind of stuff, eventually it'll pop out. Now, 
there will still be oil down in this cavity. So you'll want to at that point turn it over and let that ball pour into some sort of a cup or a bowl or whatever to get the 90, you know, get the 95% of oil out of it. So you're not just oozing oil all over your workbench. <clears throat> all right. At that point, um, once you have, um, you've gotten one side out, um, the process to get the clip out is the same. You're going to, you, at that point, this spring will just lift out. You'll turn it upside down. Um, now you can just tap the socket. You don't need a press because there's no spring pressure or anything left on the other side. Put your socket, just tap it with a mallet. Take that sir clip out. Once you do that, you can stick a, um, a long 3 8 extension through the device and just smack this whole thing out the other side. The second um, piston and bearing assembly out the other side. Just knock it out onto your bench. <coughs> um, now, uh, at that point, um, I took, this had a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff inside it, you know, can be corrosion and stuff, even though it's oil and all that. So, uh, on mine, I happened to have a nice flex hone that happened to fit that bore. I just gave it a few quick passes to clean up inside it where O-rings and things had been setting and the piston had been in there and there's little, you know, corrosion around the circlip groove, clean that up nice. Um, both sides. And then I spent, you know, quite a bit of time flushing through it to make sure that there's no grit and debris or anywhere left in this assembly. Um, and by the way, you want to get this clean. It, it is going to be a pain in the butt. Um, <clears throat> I did as much pressure washing on the machine before I took it off as I could. Then I cleaned it further in here because I don't want even one crumb of dirt to get into any of this hydraulic stuff. So I got this all prepped up and cleaned and set it to the side. <clears throat> um, you can come over here and take a look. Uh, you will want to, whether you know it or not, replace all these parts. So some people would just try and put this, replace the seals here, but your, your problem is the buckets actually, uh, swivel right on these pistons. So this is called the piston. This is uh, a bearing or a seal head. All right. So your buckets actually riding on this thing and taking all the force, it gets, visibly worn down. I mean, you can see that this thing is no, this is, you know, the proper height when it was new. This thing is just grooved out and, and, uh, and ground down. That one is much, much worse. Right. So, I mean, you can, you don't even have to measure this to see that it's clapped out. But in, next thing, because your bus buckets getting, you know, push and pulled and push and pulled with tremendous force on this, um, the, the, the bearing itself wears out. So this thing is incredibly wiped out and sloppy. And so because of that, um, that accelerates seal wear. Every time the bucket is torqued one or the other, this extra added mechanical space is just bad. And then this is so worn down here. As soon as you retract this in and it goes past the first seal, I, I mean, it's not even hardly touching anything anymore. I mean, look, look at this. So at that point, you know, it has to retract this far so that you can get the you know, get your implement off. This thing is just rattling on. There's no way it's going to hold oil, never mind oil under pressure. So <clears throat> the seals and all this have failed. You just have to replace all this. If you've, if you've gone to, if you've got it this far apart, buy these parts. You're, you're crazy if you don't. Now, um, so then comes the question of seals and orientation and how everything goes together. Um, this piece on the piston, you can't really mess it up. There's an energizer behind the O-ring that rides behind it. It's obvious. Its diameter dictates that it goes there. Same thing with the O-ring. Those you can't really screw up, um, you know, to put those together and, and where they go. So that those go on the piston. That will be pretty obvious. You can't screw that up. Everything on the bearing, you can screw up. Um, so you need to pay attention. Um, on the outside of the bearing, there is um, a flat rubber uh, seal. Uh, by the way, mine, somebody got in one side of this, put all wrong parts in it, and um, it was, it, it's a mess. But this is the stuff that just gets absolutely shot. So there's a flat black rubber washer, which is a titled, a, it's just titled ring as a part um, when you buy it on the, on the parts explosion. That part goes on the upside closest to out, and the big O-ring goes under it. So... They are oriented in this fashion here. They sit on top of each other, sandwiched, and they ride in this groove. 
So the flat black rubber washer goes up and out towards the, towards the circlip. All right. <clears throat> so that's problem number one. Next, there are two um, uh, pressure seals that ride inside of the bearing. One is pink in color. Um, the other one's black. Um, again, you'll be able to find these by part number when you're, when you're looking at your blow up. I suggest you print that off the internet and have it in front of you. But the black one goes up in the, in the assembly towards the, um, uh, towards the circlip. All right. And now here's the million and the pink one goes down in the bottom. I suggest if you haven't done this before, start with the bottom one first because these are tr tricky to put in. And as you put them in, they fit very, very, very difficult to get in. And one section of it wants to roll. So you'll get it in as best you can. And then you're going to have to just keep working it with your finger to get it to roll and orient properly into <coughs> this correct orientation. Um, the big question that's, you, that's the money, the million dollar question is which way do these go? So these seals ha are directional, okay? And um, so what you're after is the flat wide side with the groove, that side goes, uh, faces down into the cavity. So, and pressure comes from the bottom to it. So the way this works, when you hit the switch, hi uh, oil hydraulic pressure is going in, in between the piston and the bearing. And it's retracting. It's filling the cavity and pushing the piston in. When you hit the switch the other way, it's relieving the pressure that's built up inside. And this helper spring helps push them back out to full extension when the pressure gets low. So you're trying to hold pressure from going out this way. And therefore, um, the, the downside of this, the, the, the flat side with the groove goes down in the bearing and the 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 smooth side of the head looks faces up into the bearing. <clears throat> so these are a monster, like I say, to try and put in or get out. You can get them started easy, but see what starts happening is a, a teardrop gets there that's very difficult to get in. Now this one's an old one, so it, 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 it kind of went right in. The hard one is the one that's in the middle of the bore, much more challenging. Uh, I saw a video where a guy suggested to buy two of each or, you know, actually you'll buy four of each. You, you need uh, two per side um, to do this. Have a couple spares in case you tear one up because if you've already gotten this far and you, you can't get the seal in properly, and you, if you have to do anything to take it out, take a pick or a screwdriver, forget it. You, don't try and reuse that. Throw it away. You know, if, uh, don't pick something out and reuse it. You're, you're wasting time then. So that orientation is the trick. Um, these fit together incredibly tightly when you have a new piston, a new bearing, and new seals very, very tightly. So grease everything nicely. Um, you're you're going to try, you'll be able to work the first seal over the head with some effort. The second one, once everything fits tightly and is lined up, you don't have, they fit so tightly that you can't actually rock it. <coughs> You're just going to have to, again, go back to your socket, get very square to it, as perpendicular as you can, and push very uniformly and evenly, evenly with effort and wait for that seal to drop over. Uh, and it will fit tight, very, very tightly. <coughs> um, next, make sure you grease this pocket that um, everything's going to go into. Grease uh, O-ring seals and everybody, and then we're going to start this in. Again, you'll be able to get the first piston seal past the circlet groove relatively easily. The next one that goes in is going to be harder for sure. <coughs> um, you may not even be able to push it in yourself um, with just even maybe your, your body weight. Uh, but it is, if you take a long extension on your socket, you can toggle it slightly. I put the whole thing on the floor and I, I bear down on it with my body weight and I toggled this extension a little bit and got it to kind of rock in. At that point, it'll fit so tightly, you can, the first side, you can tap down in with a mallet. You'll need to get it way down in. If you don't get it down in, you won't get your clips, you won't be able, your clip won't even go past it. So um, uh, 
give enough room that you can easily get the clip in. You'll need, again, at least a two, a two, a, a two screwdrivers is best to two small screwdrivers. You need to get it started, hold it down with, hold it down with one and then poke the other one, poke with the second one to get it all the rest of the way around. Uh, from there, put it back, lay it flat on the bench, take your long extension and tap that first assembly all the way out until the, the bearing comes up, <coughs> seats against the circlet. So you've got it as extended as it can possibly be and make sure that this piston is all the way out, okay? And the reason is when you put the spring in, you want the minimum amount of spring pressure possible so that you can work on the other side. Another tip, change this spring. You think, well, what could go wrong with that spring? My, my excavator had a thousand hours on it and this spring had lost half an inch of its free length. So it was, this is completely sacked out um, for what it was originally intended to do. <coughs> I did use the press um, to reassemble mine. Same thing with the socket. It, that, you don't need a powerful press, just enough to compress that spring, which you're not gonna be strong enough to do by yourself. So I pushed it way down in and um, there is enough drag and tension that it's, it's, that's stronger than the helper spring. So when I relaxed the press, I was able to, uh, I left it in position, but slid my clip in and down. So in case it popped up, it wouldn't do anything or hurt me. So, um, and then I got my clip down in and it never tried to pop up. <coughs> and, and in fact, I ended up, these updated parts have a hole in the end. So I slid a screwdriver through the end and put a block under it and I pried and wiggled it, slid it to get it to come back up out to its fully extended location. So this thing isn't something that's you know going to pop out and shoot at you. Um, it's under the seals really have a lot of grip on it. Um, and then um, let's see, lastly, um, the is the swivel unit. I did replace the O-rings in that while I had it off and apart. I cleaned it. Um, this is a whole different assembly and that's a whole different monster to rebuild. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go into that, uh, but there are two O-rings, a smaller and a larger one under here. Make sure you buy those and take this off while you're doing this job because you, you have to spray through all those passages. Make sure there's no grit, no dirt, no debris. Change those two little O-rings um, and um, while you're in there because that's just uh, smart money. Uh, uh, um, the mine, I also found my hoses were had a lot of rub on them and wear. So they hadn't burst or leak, but I changed them. At the same time, I even bought the, there's a protective uh, canvas sock. It was $5. Um, so I bought brand new hoses and the sock. And the other thing I'm going to be able to fix on mine now that I've studied it is, mine is always, I bought it secondhand. My excavator it had 900 hours on it. Somebody had obviously worked on this because they put wrong parts in it that blew out and they put a, flat clip instead of a circlip in it and the, so mine was extra messed up but uh they had reversed my hoses and i never understood why it made no sense to me inside the machine when i pushed the lock button my pistons retracted and when i pushed the unlock button they went out that seemed wrong to me so now i'll be able to know that i can just reverse my two hoses the two hoses are an identical part number so um you can um <coughs> they can interchange. And if you wanted to buy a third one to have a new spare, just know that it's all the same part in case you ever nick one or tear one, then um, and it, you won't, you don't need to buy a left or a right or an in or an out or anything. So uh, that's the fine points to uh, replacing the pistons and seals in the uh, Bobcat e uh, uh, exchange older style. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, this, I went through a lot of trouble finding this information because nobody could tell me which way seals and everything went. If this video is helpful, hit the super thanks button. It gives you a chance to help uh, people that give you useful information on, on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can throw them two bucks or five bucks or whatever. And uh, if, it, if it saves you money and helps them out. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to uh, share and I appreciate you watching.